Howdy, heavy hitters. Welcome back. Or if this is your first time, welcome to Heavy Hitter Media, where we do hot topics, men's plus size fashion reviews, as well as reality TV reviews. And today we're going to talk about RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars, All Winners, Season 7, Episode 4, Fairy Tale Justice, which is an improv challenge. And to me, this episode was a little. Mm, okay. <laughs> It had some good moments, if that's what you're into. Um, yeah, the episode was good, so let's go ahead and get it started. So Jada and Trinity walk in arm in arm. Jada's so pretty. She's a handsome guy, and she's a pretty, pretty, pretty girl. Jada's in her confessional saying how she's a bad B-I-T-C-H, and not only can she kick A-Z-Z-A-S-S, -S, she is also a bad B, which I would agree. <laughs> she's talking and she's saying everything and she's talking about, yeah, it feels really, really good because, you know, I've been here and I was wondering if I was going to start it. Really feels good to be vindicated. So now the girls are looking around like, did she say, did she say vindicated? <laughs> and she's like, wait, what, what's, what's going on? And they're like, girl. She's like, is that not the right word? They're like, nah. She's like, well, like, validated? Validatory? <laughs> yeah, girl. You validated and Comparison to vindicated, meaning getting vengeance, getting back at somebody. Here. Come on. Good thing you're cute. <laughs> Jinx walks in and she's walking slow with the plunger on her shoulder like. I love how they make them sweat because they never know what has been told to them in reference to the plunger. Because clearly they come in, they separate them and they come in after the girls who are safe. So she now plays along with the trick that Shay started last episode as if the plunger has this deep profound meaning and it's the gift that keeps on giving with another trick and another trick i mean this is drag race so we know it's always a twist and a turn somewhere and she's playing the along the game with trinity and shay and the other girl's like wait what is it what is it you know really begging girl get the plancha <laughs> at this point they now start getting undressed and the day is over so they get undressed and it's a bunch of blah 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 yeah yeah all right, episode restarts. Jinx and the girls come in while Jinx is playing her ukulele. <laughs> she is so quirky. You gotta love her. You gotta love her. They sing a cute little song and they're around the table chatting before the, the message from Rue comes in. They chat about how five there are eight girls and five stars. Jada calls out Monet and says, out of the five stars, only one B-I-T-C-H has not been blocked. Then Trinity reminds her, no girl, there are five stars and there are two girls that have not been blocked. <laughs> <laughs> Jada's like, girl, I just got mine. Give me a chance to enjoy my star, bitch. <laughs> Let me lean in and talk to you. That would be so messed up if she just wanted... It's a game, so it happens. But it would be so messed up if somebody blocked that she just finally got a star. Girl, that would be so shady. But what is so funny is how Monet act like she shouldn't be getting no damn block. Girl, you know her. Huh? You are not capital H E R. You're not her. That you should not be blocked. You barely even placing high in these challenges, girl. Would you? Girl, let me stop because that's just my bias towards <laughs> towards Monet. We now get the message from Rue. She talks about what the challenge is, and of course, it's this rhyme and riddle of what's happening, and it's a typical you done already in hand here. <laughs> so let me confuse y'all with a cute little rhyme and a riddle. Rue enters the room. She has on a shiny magenta or fuchsia suit with a white undershirt and white pants. That's my nice. And some white platforms. Now, let me lean in and talk to you, Rue. Girl, you are already seven feet. So when you go put on five-inch platforms, girl, that makes you nine foot nine. <laughs> girl, you're scraping. You're scraping the ceiling, girl. Be careful before you knock yourself out. With this being an improv challenge, it is again called Fairy Tale Justice. There are two teams that are going to do their spins of Fairy Tale Miscarriages of Justices. So I love it. It's going to be really, really interesting. Again, you, you you see who shines because this is what they naturally do. Your two captains are going to be Jada and Trinity. Jada starts off and Jinx. Jada chooses Jinx, Monet, and Evie. Trinity chooses Shay, the Vivian, and is given Raja because Raja is not chosen. <laughs> so Raja's like, what well, girl? <laughs> the girls start reading the scripts and they're like, oh, okay, I can do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. Girl, I should do this. I can see me doing this. You know, I think I do well doing this. <laughs> So they go ahead and assign themselves the roles and that's how it is. Child, I'm not going to go through each role because it is what it is. 
Okay, at this moment, we now go into the actual fairy tale justice stories. The first group is Jinx, Jada, Evie, and um, Monet. Uh, Monet's nose is not pro correctly attached. Um, very Monet. Jada looked amazing. What's happening here? Am I attracted? Let me lean in and talk to you. Am I attracted to Jada? Because mm, I like juicy boys. Anyway, Jada looks amazing. <laughs> I can definitely say one, uh, give someone their grace when they are attracted. And Jinx is amazing. It, are we surprised? At this point of watching this, I'm like, child, Jinx is clearly going to win. Probably Jinx and um, probably Jinx and probably um, Trinity. They were just so amazing. However, I did like the next group better. All right, it's the next day in the workroom. Trinity asks the teams, how do you feel? So Jada has an energy booster after that conversation about how do you feel because they say what they said. And girl, she takes salt to hand shots. <laughs> she says it's a good high and it's an energy booster and it's legal. They take the salt, put it on their hands and they lick it. And it triggers something that... <laughs> Girl, y'all doing salt shots? <laughs> Let me find out. <laughs> so they start getting ready, and Evie reflects over watching everyone. She was like, man, I just had a really, really good time because Evie got to sit in both of the actual competitions, so both of the two different uh, scenarios, and because she's the wolf, and the wolf, is <laughs> the wolf is the common problem in both of the stories. So she sits in both. Monet asks, do they practice their looks? Because now Jada's preparing, and she has this like two-tone ombre with black and white, and it looks really, really good. So Monet is like, hey, do you guys practice your looks? Uh, Jada says, um, yeah, I practice my looks. You know, sometimes I do halfway. I really should probably do it full way because, child, it could be a mess if I don't. <laughs> so Jada asks, who is getting blocked? Then Jada reflects over the blocking pattern, and she talks about how things have looked and how... You know, this person got blocked, this person got blocked. Wait, I just won it. How it runs is that if you block a bit, you're probably the one. And I just won, so I'm probably next. <laughs> you're safe, girl. Okay, Rue looks amazing as we get ready to go on the runway for the challenge itself. Baby, when I tell you Rue had on this royal or cobalt blue, Oh, she looked amazing. I'm going to show. She looked amazing. See for yourself. Huh. Didn't she look good? Baby. <laughs> Rue introduces the judges. We have Michelle Visage, Ross Matthews, and Jeffrey Boyer Chapman with his handsome self is paying us a visit. I hope y'all have finally left that man alone. Because y'all know he was just following the routine over there for UK. Y'all ran that. <laughs> y'all ran that man from season two of Drag Race UK with a petition because y'all said he was too mean. I really wonder was that the real problem? Hmm. <laughs> we go through the runways and we start with Jada, then Jinx, Monet, Evie, Trinity, the Vivian, Raja, ending with a shade. Here are those looks. TV, and you're like, mm, this is a filler episode. Like, to me, this is what this feels like. <laughs> uh, it was a filler episode, but the runway was spikes on the runway. Everyone gives their version a variation of spikes, as you can see. Some were very literal, and some thought extremely out of the box, especially Jinx, like the other box with the porcupine. That was, that was really dope. 
So we begin with the judges give the critiques. They choose the top two. The top two are going to be Jinx, who's blocked, so she won't get a legendary star, and the Vivian, who gets her very first star. It's good to see the Vivian get a star. Oh, I like the Vivian. She's so cute. <laughs> All right. Now this part here, the lip sync. Y'all remember that episode when, was it Silk in that money? Ganache lip synced for her life and Rue said, mm -hmm. <laughs> this was a, girl, are they serious? <laughs> That's what it gave me like. Girl, they cannot be serious. It was okay, they did the best they could. The Vivian was the best of the mess. <laughs> and she wins the lip sync challenge. She's now $10,000 ripture and has a legendary star. She blocks. Dun, dun, dun. It's cute how she goes from person to person. To person. She acts like she's going to give it to Jada and she says. <laughs> Monet, I got something for you. <laughs> Monet is pissed. Going into Untucked, she's pissed. Okay, going game on. Like, yeah, okay, okay. Girl, Monet. It's a game, girl. <laughs> All right, everybody, that's the end of RuPaul's Drag Race, Episode 4, Season 7, Fairy Tale Justice. Again, thank you for watching Heavy Hitter Media. See you the next time. Y'all be easy.